Good morning, everybody. Welcome to God's house this morning as we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Easter. Uh, Our opening hymn this morning is one of my favorites. Hymn 716, I Walk in Danger All the Way, Hymn 716. Astray. 
I walk with Jesus all the way. My walk is heavenward all the way. I'll wait my soul the morrow when God's good healing shall allay all suffering, sin, and sorrow. Then worldly pomp be gone. To heaven I now press on. For although world I would not stay, my walk is heavenward all the way. Our order of worship is divine service setting three on 184. I invite you to rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. We pause for reflection on God's Word and for self-examination. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsively our introit as found in our bulletins. With a voice of singing, declare this with a shout of joy to the end of the earth. The Lord has redeemed His servant Jacob. Alleluia. I cried to Him with my mouth, and high praise was on my tongue. Blessed be God, because He has not rejected my prayer or removed His steadfast love from me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward man. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, 
we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. We pray together the prayer of the day is found in our bulletins. Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the sixth Sunday of Easter is from Numbers chapter 21. From Mount Hor they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that He take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten when he sees it shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. We read responsively, our gradual is found in our bulletins. Alleluia, praise the Lord, alleluia. Alleluia, praise the Lord, alleluia. The Lord who has redeemed us with His blood is risen and has appeared to us. Burnt offerings of fatlings I will bring up to you with the smoke of rams. I will make sacrifices of bullocks with he goats. I shall come to your house with burnt offerings. I will fulfill my vows to you, which my lips have uttered, which my mouth has spoken in my adversity. Alleluia. The, Lord. the epistle is from James chapter 1. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. 
But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained from the world. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We rise as we sing together the Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Jesus said, In that day you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will, that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world And now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, Ah, now you are speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming indeed, it has come, when you will be scattered, each to his own home and you will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Our hymn of today for today is hymn 766, Our Father Who from Heaven Above. This hymn is uh, Luther's catechism hymn on our Lord's Prayer, and so I know it's long, but we're going to sing all of it because I'm not going to cut out any of the petitions of the Lord's Prayer. So we'll sing all nine verses, hymn 766. Bye. 
family and pray to you in unity. Teach us no thoughtless words to say, but from our inmost hearts to pray. Your name be hallowed, help us, Lord, in purity to keep your word, that to the glory of your name we walk before you free from blame. Let no false teaching us pervert, all poor deluded souls convert. Your kingdom come, God, your domain, and your eternal righteous reign. The Holy Ghost enrich our day with gifts attendant on our way. Break Satan's power, defeat his rage, Preserve your church from age to age. Your gracious will on earth be done, as it is done before your throne, that patiently we obey throughout our lives all that you say curb flesh and blood and every ill that sets itself against your will give us this day our daily bread, and let us all be clothed and fed. Save us from hardship, war, and strife, in plague and famine spare our life, that we in honest peace may live to care and greed no entrance give. Forgive our sins, Lord, we implore that they may trouble us no more. We too will gladly those forgive who hurt us by the way they live. Help us in our community to serve each other willingly. Lead not into temptation, Lord, where our grim foe and all his horde would vex our souls on every hand. Help us resist, help us to stand. Firm in the faith, almighty host, through 
comfort of the Holy Ghost. From evil, Lord, deliver us. The times and days are perilous. Redeem us from eternal death. And when we yield our dying breath, console us, grant us calm release, and take our souls to you in peace. Amen, that is, so shall it be. Make strong our faith in you that we may doubt not, but with trust believe that what we ask we shall receive. Thus, in your name and at your word, we say amen, O oh, hear us, Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. How is it that we know God's love? Well, we look to where God has revealed it to us. We look to the Son of God. What did Jesus do? In His actions we see God's love. We see His kindness to all people, His compassion for those who are suffering, His grace toward sinners seeking salvation from sin. And when you see what He does, you are struck most by what He chose to endure. The act of Christ by which God's love is most famously known was not even Jesus doing. It was Jesus being done too. He suffered betrayal, arrest, abuse, scorn. He suffered crucifixion and death. There God reveals His love. God doesn't just talk. He does. And His deeds prove His words. We can count on whatever He says because He always backs up His words with deeds. So it must be for us who bear His name. When we were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God joined His name to us and He claimed us as His dear children. We are clothed in Christ, covered by His righteousness. We are Christians and Christians imitate God. He says it and then does it. So it is for us. We hear what He says and then we do it. St. James writes, But be doers of the Word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. God's Word tells us what we are. The word Christian is seldom used in the Bible to identify a Christian. Most often the word righteous is used. God calls His Christians the righteous. The righteousness does not come from us, though. It isn't our doing. It is Christ's doing. It is His obedience, His suffering, that He is our representative offered to God for us. We are justified. That is, we are reckoned by God to be righteous through faith in Christ, not by our own good deeds. And yet we are righteous nonetheless. It's not as if God is kidding around when He says that we are righteous. He doesn't pretend to justify us when He justifies us through faith in Christ. No, God says you are righteous. And so it is. We are righteous. We are righteous with nothing less than the obedience wrought, blood-bought by Jesus Christ. So act like it. That's what James is saying in our text. 
Be doers of the word, not hearers only. Righteous people live righteous lives. You are a Christian. Act like one. James goes on, For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. The perfect law of liberty is the gospel. The gospel tells you that you are a child of God, at peace with God, righteous before God, all for the sake of Christ. Look to the gospel. Listen to what it says. And then you will do what God wants. We are used to thinking of the law as a mirror. That's how we teach the bitter but necessary truth of God's word, that the law shows us our sins. We look at what God demands of us, summarized in the Ten Commandments that He gave to Moses. And in taking those commandments to heart, according to the, what they require of us, both in thought and word and deed, we see reflected back to us our own sin. The law is a mirror that shows us our sins. Here, the Apostle James wants us to consider the gospel also as a mirror that, not shows, that doesn't show us our sins, but instead shows us what we are in Christ for His sake. Then go out and do what the living Christ does. St. Paul talks about this when he writes, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave Himself for me. For a Christian to ignore the life that God has called him to live is to forget that he is a Christian. Christians live the life of Christ. We are born of His bones and His flesh. He is the head and we are the body. There is a mystical union in which Christ is joined to His Christians in a bond that cannot be broken. This is what we acknowledge, confess, and believe. So live like it. Living the Christian life brings blessing to the one who lives it. It is a life of joy because it is a life worth living. The life of the Christian bears true fruit that lasts. So act like a Christian. Be what you already are. What are we supposed to do? James is not talking here about talking the talk. He's talking about walking the walk. James continues, If any among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Put a bridle on your tongue. Control what you say. James is not talking primarily about avoiding cursing, filthy talk, lying, gossiping, and other sins, whereby worthless and cruel words gush out of the mouth like sewage. Have you ever had that happen where you said something and immediately as it was coming out of your mouth, you said, oh no, come back, don't hear that. It happens to me almost on a daily basis. I'm not very good at bridling my tongue, just ask my children. Not all of these things are sure included, but the primary bridling of which he is speaking is to rein in self-promotion, self-congratulatory boasting. You see, so often people think of religion as being a matter of what you say, but it's not. Religion is how you act. At the congregation that I served at as a, a field worker, there was a sign in the vestry where the pastors got dressed, and it said... The best sermon is how you act. You can get up here and you can preach, but if I go out there and act completely contrary to what I preach to you, are you going to listen to me? Talk is cheap, friends. Anybody can spout off about how religious or spiritual they are, but talking about you isn't talking about Christ. Christ is the Savior. You are not. 
Christ's righteousness avails before God yours does not. So quit presenting yourself as God's gift to the world or to the community or to the church. True religion is not just talk. It is deed. The great Danish hymnist Thomas Kingo, one of my favorites that we talk about all the time in our house, unfortunately he doesn't have nearly enough hymns in our hymnal, but he gets to the point of our text today when he writes, "'Tis all in vain that you confess the doctrine of the church unless you live according to your creed and show your faith by word and deed. Observe the rule to others do as you would have them do to you." Yes, Christians talk. That's how we share the gospel, right? But not all of the talk of the Christian is Christian talk. That's what James is saying. Talking without thinking is common among folks who like the sound of their own voice. But the word religion actually means God-fearing, not man-pleasing. True religion does not boast or elevate oneself. To fear God means to care more about helping those who cannot help you than it does in promoting yourself. St. James writes, Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble, to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Now the world always seeks to please itself. When we think of particularly obnoxious or obvious sins, we think of things such as sexual immorality or drunkenness, violent outbursts, stealing and killing, so on and so forth. But to be unspotted from the world doesn't mean simply to avoid such obviously destructive sins. It means also that our hearts are connected, directed by that pattern of love that we have learned from our Savior Jesus. Consider the gospel in which we trust. That gospel is for the helpless. It is for the helpless that need help. This is why James mentions specifically visiting widows and orphans in their trouble. How many of us have picked up the phone having seen people that still haven't come back from COVID and called them? Offered any words of encouragement to strengthen them to bring them back here. True religion, genuinely God-fearing and pious behavior is to help those who cannot pay you, who cannot reward you or do you any good. To love simply for the joy of loving, that is what Christians do. That is what Jesus did and Christians belong to Jesus Christ. The world does good so that it may praise itself pat itself on the back. Jesus addressed this view of good deeds in His Sermon on the Mount when He said, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets that they might have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Good deeds aren't done for the benefit of the one doing them. Good deeds are done for the benefit of the other. This is what the Christian understands. When we look to the perfect law of liberty, that is, when we look to the Gospel in which we trust, the Gospel that makes us righteousness, righteous before God, what do we see? We see the love of God in Christ. We see God rescuing us from the guilt and punishment of our sins. We see divine mercy and forgiveness. We don't see what we add to God. We see what He does for us. We see our lives. The true Christian religion is to imitate the love that we see in Christ. Visiting widows and orphans entails so much more than simply visiting widows and orphans. It refers to an entire category of behavior. It means a radical break with the world's view of religion. Our religion doesn't help us. Our religion helps others. The good life is not a life of wealth and worldly success. 
It's not a life of amassing power or prestige or any of the many pursuits that occupy so much of the attention and capture the affections of the world. No, friends, the good life, that is, the life truly worth living, is the life lived in service to those in need. What does this mean? It means that human life cannot be measured by material measurements. When we do what we do to get more and more stuff that will simply perish as the world we live at, with the world we are living our lives in will perish. What the child of God does, though, does as a child who desires to benefit the neighbor. And this is always done for those who are created in the image of God and redeemed by the blood of Christ. They already have value. And thus what we do to help them in either body or soul must also have value. It is an offering to God. The service of a Christian father or mother for their children must have value. God values it. The Christian soldier who gives his life for his fellow citizens is never wasting that life, even if the nation forgets it, even if they live in a city that desires to not even celebrate Memorial Day anymore because our parade is too expensive. If you don't know, that's our city of Milwaukee. Christ's sacrifice for us on the cross, taking away our sin, making us fit for heaven, this was valuable. It was the most precious act that anyone has ever done. When we imitate that love by what we do, what we do is also precious to God, and we are blessed in the doing of it. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We sing together our offertory as found on page 192. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God and for all people according to their needs. We pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Your Son has promised that if we ask, we shall receive. Let these words ring in our ears so that we may know our prayers are pleasing to You, since Christ has commanded us to pray and promise to hear us. Lord, in Your mercy. Lord, protect Your church from complacency anxiety over worldly things, and fear of persecution. Give us faithful pastors and church workers who proclaim your life-giving word to us. Grant us zeal for the house of God and peace in our hearts and in our days. We lift up especially Pastor Baker, Pastor Walter, Seminarian Silas, and Seminarian Tanner. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, soften the hearts in every home. Turn parents and children toward each other in love and in patience. Banish the spirit of imprudence, stubbornness, and rebellion from all. Sanctify us in your truth. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal Lord, receive our supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings for all civil authorities and servants in high positions. Give them the saving knowledge of Christ Jesus, our mediator, whose death is the ransom for all. Bless also their exercise of power for the common good, that we may lead peaceful and quiet lives, godly and dignified in every way. Protect also those who are most vulnerable among us, for all babies in the womb and all of the elderly. Lord, in your mercy. 
compassionate God in the resurrection of your dear Son, you showed his victory over all our griefs and sorrows, having carried them to the cross, breaking their power and winning for us salvation. Grant your mercy on the sick and the sorrowing, the grieving and the dying. We pray especially for Paul and Nancy, for Rick, Sharon, Laurel, Barb, Sue, Dwayne, Carol, Michelle, Raymond, Tom, Nathan, Julia, Perry, Jerry, Betty, Dee, Jan, Joan, Amy, Kylie, Doris, and those that we name before you in our hearts now. By your merciful aid and according to your gracious will, we pray that they may be upheld in their time of affliction, defended in their time of trial, guarded by your mighty protection, and giving healing from their affliction or entrance into your eternal kingdom through the power of Christ's mighty resurrection. Be also with those who have cause to celebrate this week, with Stephanie and Paul as they celebrate their baptismal birthdays, and with the whole Gross family as they celebrate Stephanie's graduation. Keep these and all of your children in the holy ark of your church until we are all with you in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, the children of Israel were impatient with you and Moses, your servant. By their words, they showed their distrust of you and their discontent with your gracious gifts. Work in us true fear of you that we may not be destroyed in this life or the next by such sinful folly. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you have attended to the voice of our prayers, for you have commanded us to pray and have promised to hear us. Let your mercy comfort and sustain us in prayer, that we may heartily and fervently pray to you at all times and in all places, not doubting but trusting in your promise. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacraments found on page 194. I invite you to rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying he has destroyed death, and by his rising again he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore with Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, oh, oh, Holy, oh, oh, Holy, Holy Lord God, of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, 
Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. O thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Kissed away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Christ, the Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Amen. You may be seated. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Charles, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Jan, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins.
Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Leah, you can come up. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Bend down thy grave. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Every sin who then could heaven. Mark, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Tell you, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Barb, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Jennifer, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Must fear the strict demand. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Mercy. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Is in the Lord in the Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Full and just. On take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. <clears throat> take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Bill, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Lord, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Through the night. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Nancy, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Born of the Spirit and the... Kathy, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. For his Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Michael, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Andrea, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. May the Lord bless you and keep you in his baptismal grace and love. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Vicky, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take a drink, the true blood of Christ shed for you. Nancy, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Paul, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink, the true blood of Christ shed for you. Tracy, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Dennis, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. 
Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Stephanie, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Rhonda, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. John, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Keep, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Bob, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. May the Lord bless you and keep you in his baptismal grace and love. May the Lord bless you and keep you in his baptismal grace and love. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Rick, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Paul, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Bob, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Larry, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. John, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Rudy, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. We rise for the post-communion blessing. May the true body and blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul until life everlasting. Depart in His peace, knowing your sins are forgiven. We sing together the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now let us thou thy servant Depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes 
eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to light and the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. You may be seated for our closing hymn. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn 457, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, hymn 457. Jesus Christ is risen today, Alleluia. Our triumphant Gloria Day, Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross, to redeem our loss. Alleluia. Hymns of praise then let us sing. Alleluia. Unto Christ our heavenly Alleluia. Who endured the cross and grave? Alleluia. Sinners to redeem and save. the pains which he endured. Alleluia. Our salvation have procured. Alleluia. Now above the sky he's king. Alleluia, where the angel 
be seated. Good morning, everybody. Just a couple of announcements. This week um, it will be our last week for matins. We'll take a break for matins during the summer, and we'll also take a break for Bible studies during the summer. So this will be the last week for Bible study and Kids Sunday School. Um, For the summer, we'll pick that back up after Labor Day. We do have also this, so this week we have Matins at Oklahoma Avenue at 8.30 on Wednesday with Bible study following Matins here at Trinity 8.30 on Thursday. Thursday evening, we do have our Ascension service here at Trinity, 7 p.m. Ascension service here at Trinity this coming Thursday. Uh, Also, um, next week on the 1st of June, or two weeks on the 1st of June, we do have the Feast of Justin Martyr. He's one of the the early early church martyrs. Um, And so that will be Wednesday, June 1st at 7 p.m. Pastor Silas and his wife Moira will be moving into the parsonage over at Oklahoma Avenue on the 31st of this month. Uh, And so we give God thanks and praise. He just finally graduated from seminary on Friday, and uh, the service was beautiful. Uh, And so we're pretty excited about that, so they'll be up here. Anybody that's wanting to contribute, uh, like I had announced last week, to that uh, that fund to help uh, fix some things up in the parsonage, please just see me. Um, As a reminder, uh, that money's not going through Trinity. It's not tax deductible. It's going directly to Silas so that he and his wife can figure out what paint they want and carpet they want and things like that. So anybody that wants to help with that, just see me and I'll give you the rest of the details uh, on that. But I just want to make doubly sure that you know that's not a tax-deductible thing going through the church. It is going directly to Silas and Moira to to get some things for the parsonage. So uh, thank you to those that have already given thus far. Um, as, once again, you show me how wonderful you are uh, to, to, to support your pastors. So thank you for that. Please don't forget to sign in to the pew pad on the inside of each pew. Uh, also, we are collecting the geraniums throughout this week. There are some already in the Bible study room. Uh, if you did not bring them today and still want to contribute to that, just call Trish or I um, and bring them this week and we'll get them. So for next weekend's church service, they will actually be... Uh, adorned here in the front of the church to uh, to decorate. Yeah, Nancy. Yeah, on Saturday, do you know what time you're coming in to do so? Okay. Show up on Saturday at some time if you want to help the pre-decoration. Um, so just make sure that those are in before Saturday then so that we can make sure that we get them pre pre because we've wrapped them in foil and things like that and put them up, so it takes a little bit of extra time. Um, So please uh, make sure that you let me know and get those in before Saturday so that we can get them prepared to to be at the front of the church. So they'll be up at the front of the church for Memorial Day weekend, and then we'll plant them around the the garden uh, in the front and the side of the church. Uh, Any other announcements I have neglected or forgotten? Wonderful. Let us go in peace and serve our Lord. Amen. The Holy Dinosaur. Yeah. 